Common stock market prices from 1920 to 1935. October 29th, 1929. October 29, 1929, also known as Black Tuesday. Panic set in all across the U.S., thus being the worst stock market crash in U.S. history. Wall Street investors traded just under 16.5 billion shares in one day. After the crash, billions of dollars were lost, wiping out thousands of investors. What led to the stock market crash of 1929? Well, there were some warning signs that began in the fall of 1929. The economy began to slump and consumers weren't buying as much. The Thursday before the 29th, the value of stocks traded on the New York Stock Exchange had plunged by 9%. Major banks bought large numbers of stocks, hoping to keep prices from dropping even more. This had worked temporarily. When traders returned on Monday, they soon realized something was wrong. As Monday turned into Tuesday, investors dumped more than 16 million shares of stock. The collapse on Black Tuesday affected the stock of even the most solid of companies. After the crash, land values dropped to less than half of what they had been. The farmers were no longer worth what they still owned on the land. Farmers and rural residents greatly felt the impact. People and companies that used to buy food and agricultural products no longer had the money to buy much of anything. Other countries couldn't afford the crops. This caused hyperinflation. The value of money was eroded from their real value. After the crash, farmers tried to produce even more crops and livestock to pay off their debts, taxes, and living expenses. Families began to burn corn rather than coal because it was cheaper. Many farmers um, began to go bankrupt because prices had dropped so low. On the plus side, farmers could grow their own food, while city dwellers could not. Um, farmers began to grow angry and rallied against the government. The government passed the AAA, or Agricultural Adjustment Act, which set limit production of crop and herds that farmers could produce. Stock market prices from 1985 to 2015, October 29th, Today, both the stock market and farms have developed with technology and logistics. Agricultural stocks have proved to be a stable, reliable choice for consistent growth and income. Constant advances in farming technology, more refined methods of crop cycling, and an increased demand for organic foods have put the agriculture industry in an economic position that is ripe for the picking. Agriculture markets like corn, wheat, potatoes, cows, sheep, and chickens are all a finite resource, so they possess significant value. The larger and more successful corporations are Monsanto, Mosaic, and CF Industries. Land can be expensive for farmers, so they might buy on margin for the land to be safe while producing their crops, but some might pay installments if they can't afford to purchase all that land, so they progressively pay the owner or bank back. On a lower market scale, if a farmer is selling to a smaller corporation, the farmer may offer the corporation credit, knowing they will pay him or her back with the money the crops make for the corporation. Hyperinflation hasn't been a huge problem in America recently. The government even pays farmers for their excess crops, so they still grow a large amount. The agricultural market and agricultural stock market is currently at an all-time high, but agriculture has been a staple in the world economy since the very first farm.